Okay, well, Cliff summed it up perfectly there. We don't talk anymore. Or do we? Over the next 20 minutes or so, we'll be talking about social media and the impact of this on day-to-day lives. We have some guests joined us in the studio. Guys, do you find that when you're out with family and friends, they are Facebooking, Instagramming, YouTubing and making you worried that we don't talk anymore? Kim, Kat and Leonie are going to share their thoughts on this. And Kim, over to you. Well, I'm not actually anti-social media, but I do believe that there's a place and time for it. For instance, I love going out to um, dinner with family and friends and catching up with their lives and, and often debating current affairs. But what I find is that you look around the um, you look around the, the the restaurant, and I feel that it's very sad that people um, aren't actually talking to each other. Um, that's because they're preoccupied by checking their Facebook account or um, replying to texts. It's almost as if they've forgotten how to have face to face conversations with each other. Yes, Kim, I agree with you. Um, I think we're losing the art of face to face conversation. And it's too easy to shy away from this and hiding behind a text message. Um, I think talking face to face, we have visual cues that we can pick up um, with each other, which we really lose by sort of hiding behind our screens and our phones. And also when we're text messaging, we can lose the um, what we're trying to say. Um, it can be misread, misunderstood, and people can get upset with you. So, um, yeah, I definitely agree with what you're saying. I agree with both of you. I think that also the element of privacy has been lost. I mean, often I'm out with friends, they're taking photographs, it goes on Facebook, they tag you in. The next thing, you go to work and people are saying, oh, I know where you went, who, you know, what you ate, who you were with. And, and I find it really, it's quite impersonal. In fact, I, I get quite offended when people try and do that to me. I just feel that people put their whole life on a stage and they actually miss out on taking part in the social situation that they're actually in. You know, just like you said, Kim, you know, when they're having a meal. And, and what about when they're going to concerts and they're actually watching a concert through a phone? That, to me, is, is rather bizarre. Yeah, I would agree with that. You often get wherever you are nowadays, if you're trying to watch something from a distance, you're looking through hundreds of phones in front of you. And actually, I feel like that destroys the experience that we have. We go to watch something live, and yet we are watching it live via a screen, which essentially you'd probably have a better view of if you were at home watching it live over the internet or buying the DVD after it comes out. I mean, I think it's lost. I agree. I've been to so many concerts where you're normally stuck behind someone very tall who's got the phone up in the air and you can't see anything. So actually, even at the concert, it really distracts you and also detracts from the whole performance. And I've come home myself having taken a picture of what I thought was Lady Gaga. But actually, it turned out to be only her legs. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, do you guys think this is a generational thing? Is it just young people or do we see more and more often more, you know, middle-aged, older people now getting involved in this type of thing? I think it's everything. I think everybody um, has their own way of utilising social media. I just think that maybe we utilise it a little bit too often and sometimes in a very wrong way. I agree, totally agree. Um, I think probably the younger generation do it more so than, than the older generation. And a lot of the older people don't actually know how to use their phones, so they still, they still have the art of conversation. My son even actually texts me when he's upstairs to ask me what time dinner's coming on. (laughs) I guess that takes away from the usual mum shouting down the stairs. I think I'd rather have that any day. (laughs) Well, that's very interesting. Uh, We'll take a break there and we'll move in and have another song now. But stay tuned and we'll be talking more about this after this next song. I rented my apartment on a Monday at one Singing do lolly lolly shaky bum shaky bum Started moving in it on a Tuesday at two Singing do lolly lolly shaky do shaky do Wednesday at three I called the phone company Singing hey baby put a phone in for me Thursday at four he came and knocking at my door Singing hey baby I'm your telephone and you just show me where Want it and I'll put it where I can. I can put it in the bedroom, I can put it in the hall, I can put it in the bathroom, I can hang it on the wall. You can have it with the bush, you can have it with the ring. And if you really want it, you can have a ding-a-ling because of, hey baby, I'm your telephone man. Can't believe that. And then he says, No, another fellow's call you, tell him how it all began. Well, can you imagine? 
He's Martin Clark. And she's Heather Harrison. And together we present the Roots Collective here on Seclo Sounds. Tune in every Friday from 9 pm to hear a great selection of blues, folk, jazz, reggae, country, soul, gospel, and Americana. And don't forget there's my gig guide for MK and the surrounding area too. The Roots Collective on Seclo Sounds, your community radio station. together on seclosounds.org So we were rocking with Kim's choice of Telephone Man by Murray Wilson. <laughs> we're now back in the studio talking about social media and how we don't talk anymore. We've got Josh, Leone and Jess. Josh. Yes, um, yeah, we've, we've had the golden oldies now. It's, it's time to hear <laughs> a younger perspective. But no. <laughs> um, no, I, I feel that I agree mostly with what has been said before this, actually. But I also believe that um, social media is an extension of us as people. So we can do everything we'd normally do at home um, without technology um, through the use of technology. So may- maybe like making friends with people. For instance, myself, I've been able to make friends with people from across the world or even the other side of the UK. So I've made some good friends by being able to use social media. Have you done that, Josh? Yeah. Um, just through, you've got different things like groups. You can you can speak to people. I think if the same way you would in if you were in, walking down the street and you went up and spoke to someone, you can do that via social media, and that's what it's there for. Really, it's there to connect to people, to share your life, to to share your interests and passions, etc. So, yeah. Have you met up with any of those people? I have indeed. Yes. And how did it go? Yeah, it's been good. I've been able to. Um, speak about things like business different hobbies people you can train you on different things like speaking etc so yeah that's um that's all come about through facebook and different social media platforms were all the people legitimate Le- legitimate mm-hmm. yeah did you have any catfishes thrown in there i haven't mm-hmm. yet no no so no catfish but i have heard stories <laughs> <laughs> well that's good to hear um, that was a very interesting point. Um, Jess, how about you? What's your view on our link to social media today? Well, it's really good because from my perspective, um, all the different platforms of social media really brings to life all the different ways you can communicate with people. And from my point of view, my nan, she's deaf, so she can't talk on the phone like people, other people can and she can't speak to us or you know tell us happy birthday on our birthday and things like that. She used to write us a big long fax like happy birthday. Oh. Um, so, but now she can pick up her phone and get the um, FaceTime on and she can FaceTime us and see us and sign to us. She can sign to her friends. So yeah, it's really good for her because she can then communicate with people she wouldn't necessarily be able to. And has that changed her life? Yeah, definitely, because now she can speak to us or her friends and without having to be, be able to write a fax or, you know, before the times where she had a mobile phone and could text. But, yeah, no, it's really good for her. I suppose that puts th- a different perspective on things. Yeah, it's very interesting, actually. I've, I've found a similar experience myself when my family live over a four-and-a-half-hour drive away and, actually, my parents really get a kick out of actually being able to see me and talk to me face-to-face over, you know, FaceTime and Skype rather than having to rely on being, uh, you know, having a discussion over the phone. It's, it's much harder to pick up, as Kat said, on those social cues. I think also for me as well, when you're talking to your family, you can find yourself getting into a bit of a rut where you end up feeling like you, although you're talking to them, you're sort of interested in other things that are going on around you. You start to cook your dinner 
or you look away but actually if you're looking at someone and you're actually engaging with somebody over the phone by looking at them and talking to them and smiling at them and pulling all these different funny faces it actually makes you want to talk for longer it takes that time away from all those other chores in your life and allows you to have that connection with the people that are closest to you I found that as well. I've been living in the Middle East the last five years. So as a result, my son's grown up and he's spent from age three up till he's nine now, nearly, um, basically not seeing much of his grandparents and family. So it's been invaluable. We've been able to speak a lot on Skype and even just watching him play and very basic things allow them to be part of his life, which you wouldn't get before when it was just a telephone. And I previously communicated with my parents when I was at uni via telephone because they lived in the Middle East then as well. So I found that just letters and the telephone wasn't anywhere near as good as Skype. So actually it's really helped our family to stay in contact and particularly for our son to keep in contact with his grandparents because now he would, well, towards the end he would just pick up Skype and do it himself. And interestingly earlier Jess was making a, a very good point about how her family has a group that she speaks to everybody in her family under one brand of social media through WhatsApp. Mm. And basically that allows you, doesn't it, to yeah, it does. communicate with them all in one go. So everybody's included. You know, how do you feel about that? What does that make you feel when you talk to your family? And it's so easy. Well, you, you're right. It is so easy. And everybody's so connected and you know what everyone's doing. And you can make plans quicker because everyone's in the same place and knowing what everyone's doing. So, yeah, I think it's a really good way to communicate with everyone in the same place let me just ask you though um guys who here can actually live without their phone for a day i know i certainly can uh, well i've got to say that that is i think part of the problem today that um us as a society have become addicted almost to social media to our phones and i think that's part of where we need to work on the way the way we you know treat the the technology that we have I think it can just be bordering on quite rude when you're actually having a conversation with somebody and they're tapping away on their phone. I find it distracting and I find that people just disconnect from me very, very quickly. Maybe it's my personality. (laughs) Absolutely. And from other side of things, it's so easy now to feel um, quite excluded through social media, especially with this... um, ability to tell when somebody's read your message you end up dwelling on the fact that you know that they've seen this message and yet they're not coming back to you i think that's something we've all faced and we've all had a separate discussion about anyway we're having a really good discussion guys should we have another little song now okay we've got a great one coming up ring my bell by anita ward <laughs> 